Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and or listening to the podcast and welcome to my house. It's time for another ServiceNow Store Highlights episode. Today it's SSH version 0909 2024. It is the day before Gener- Xanadu general release or general availability from ServiceNow. So we've got a pretty low number here, 36 new or updated or in this today's case a ghost application. 36 of them in this episode. Uh, Let's see the breakdown here. Three compatibility updates, four fixes, one ghost, like I said, four highlights, eight minor updates, 12 new releases, a little bit more than we usually have, and four release notes fails. Let's jump right in. Let's not waste any time. Let's check out those compatibility fixes. We've got three of them. Net Enrich Connect, SHI Integration for Procurement Service Management, and Shippies Core all had compatibility updates. I think they were all Xanadu. The next one is uh, four fixes. We had data loss prevention incident response, DeepL translator service spoke pro by TM Labs, designer, and Tanium vulnerability response integration. So four fixes for the episode. Uh, one ghost application. Let's check on it again and click and see if it's back. It's not. It's still no longer there. And that's Dell Native Edge. Now we got tricked a little bit last time. Let's go ahead and see if there's a Dell Native Native Edge in the new releases. There is not, so it's just gone and with no explanation. So Dell Native Edge is a ghost. We have, we'll come back to the highlights here. We have eight minor updates, eight of them. Let's go forward here. Delinea Credential Resolver, Job R, Kindrel Integration Base, Kindrel Integration Service Request Inbound, Power BI Connector, T-Systems Connector, Tableau Connector, and Wiz Integration for Container Vulnerability Response. All had minor updates. Minor updates meaning there were some changes, but it was real small stuff. Maybe even some fixes thrown in there with the the changes. Then we have four release notes fails. Uh, Automate Pro, Cisco Customer Smart Bonding, Citrix IT Service Management Connector, and CMMMC. A release note fail is that there's just not enough information to tell you what's new, what got updated, what changed with the application. I'm pulling up the last one here as an example. You can see the past three releases, it's the same release notes. Uh, So here we are after an August 23 release to September 2024. They're versioning it, but we have no idea what they're doing, so it's a release notes fail. Um, that's four of those, and that brings us to the fun part, or one of the fun parts, and it's going to be new releases. So let's jump right into the new releases. First up, API Service Graph Connector for Apigee X. Import API proxies and related data from Apigee X into the CMDB. Key features, use the pre-built integration to map Apigee data into the CMDB data model for APIs. Populate the following CMDB and related tables. I'm going to cut off the CMDB part on the prefix table names here. CI Cloud Org, CI GCP Project, CI GCP Folder, CI Apigee API Gateway, CI Managed API, CI API Frontend, CI API Backend. And the last two there, API Deployment and API Consumer. Uh, that's what's new. Um, oh, and this is an innovation lab offering, so it's not supported, doesn't carry any warranties, and usually is not available um, in a PDI nor a production instance, according to the screen there. So that's what's new from the team at ServiceNow. Our second new release is going to be Core ALM Connector for SAP Change and Transport Management System. ServiceNow Connector for SAP Transport Management. Increase your speed of innovation without compromising the integrity of your SAP change process. Manage your SAP transports directly from ServiceNow using the out-of-the-box integration from ServiceNow to SAP, Transport Management Services, or STMS. Uh, key features, uh, we've got a mouthful here, so I'm going to stick with the, the kind of paragraph headers. Take control of your transports directly from ServiceNow. Maintain the integrity of your SAP changes with features, um, including in the list of features. Manage multiple parallel project and maintenance landscapes, and minimize impact to existing ServiceNow workflows. For those of you that are listening and not watching, there's a lot more text on the screen, so if you're interested in what that text says, go check out my blog, justin.house, and you'll see a link to each application that's in this episode. Uh, We have two screenshots. First screenshot here is going to be, it looks like a mock-up screenshot, like a wireframe, but it's basically showing a form view of a change request, and then there's a drop-down for whether the change is an SAP change, yes or no, I'm guessing, and then there's dev, QA, and prod um, kind of annotation into another window. And the second screenshot is the transform management showing a t- again a change request. And under the SAP transport tab, there is a create TR, create and import TOC, release TR, import TR, couple, decouple, re import TR, and re release TR. 
I don't know SAP, so I don't know what any of those things mean, but that's the only two screenshots we have for this new release from Core ALM LLC. Next new release is going to be the DLP Incident Response Integration with ICAP or ICAP. Um, let's scroll down to the key features here. Again, a lot of words, so I'm going to read the headers or the... Um, the first bullet there, ingestion of DLP alerts from Amazon S3, display DLP alerts in the DLP workspace, evidence file download, automation, automation and response workflows, advanced response options, and dashboards and data trends. There is no screenshots on this one, but it is another Innovation Lab offering, which means it doesn't carry any warranties, doesn't have support. And um, this one is available in your ServiceNow developer portal instances, so you just never know uh, when they are or not going to be available. But that's what's new for the team at ServiceNow. Next up is Easy Move In, Move Smarter, Move Easier with Easy Move In. Key features, enhance customer experience, improve data accuracy, centralized case management, reduced manual intervention, and increased operational efficiency. We've got a hand full of screenshots here. First one's going to be the easy move in catalog item. Maybe it's on a portal and basically showing um, move in all the different steps or stages. And then there's a form with collecting details. Um, so we're going to move through that form. Next is supply address, company details, that declaration, billing address, previous occupier details, meter read, and confirmation accuracy. Next screenshot is showing after one of these is submitted, the activity stream on the portal showing it's a work in progress. Next screenshot is the back end view showing the all menu with the easy move in menu. And then there's some move in cases on the main screen there. This is the platform UI or the classic UI. And then we're back to our service portal view for this new application from Padmini, Padmini LTD. Next new release is going to be Genius Active Archive. Archive documents and audit logs to external storage for example, FileNet or Azure, to reduce storage consumption on SNOW Cloud or ServiceNow Cloud. Surprised they let them put that abbreviation in there. They usually don't let us say that one. Key features, integration with IBM FileNet Content Manager, moving or archiving attachments to FileNet dedicated folder, hence freeing space in ServiceNow, and unarchiving, bringing back attachments from FileNet to ServiceNow with the same sysid linked to the original record at the same time deleting documents in FN for FileNet, I guess. Um, net, they do have some screenshots. First one is the source to pay workspace showing a $432.40 invoice from Penmalion. Um, there's a banner saying the invoice has been paid and you can pretty much, this looks like the workspace usually presents. Next screenshot is the storage screenshot. It says that at the top. Um, and I don't know what I'm looking at. It's like uh, some files. Yeah, some files. And then if you click on one, it has a little preview on the right with some properties. And then next screenshot is the uh, back into that $432 invoice in the activity stream. There's a document for penmelon to bc2010.pdf. Next screenshot is very similar, but it's a different document with the document preview on the right. And then the storage screenshot. Oh, we started over. We cycled all the way through. Okay. All right, Justin. Easy boy. Uh, next, or uh, that's what's new from the team at Genus Technologies, Inc. I might have said Genius earlier, but this is Genus or Genus. G-E-N-U-S. So I might have got the pronunciation wrong. I'll definitely find out when I edit this. Next up is also from the same company, Genus FileNet Spoke. Reimagine how you integrate with IBM FileNet repository. Key features on the document management side. Uploading a document from ServiceNow attachment to FileNet. Downloading a document from FileNet to ServiceNow attachment, looking for documents in FileNet, and deleting a document in FileNet. We've got a couple of screenshots for this application. First one's going to be Workflow Studio showing the home page and actions. Um, it's the Genus FileNet spoke actions. Read attachment from FileNet, delete FileNet document, save attachment in FileNet, and find documents in FileNet. Second screenshot is what looks to be an action designer for the read attachment from FileNet. So if you're familiar with Flow Designer, uh, creating actions. Next screenshot is uh, also from a flow or subflow showing the genus FileNet or genus FileNet spoke actions if you were to select them while you're building. And then we're back to our first screenshot showing the list of actions. And that's what's new, what that's also new from the team at Genus Technology LLC. Next new release is could be from Rapid7. It's the Rapid7 Insight AppSec application VR integration, bi-directional integration between Insight AppSec and ServiceNow AVR module. Key features, scroll back up here a little bit. 
The Rapid7 Insight AppSec Application Vulnerability Response Integration is a bi-directional integration providing the following capabilities. Ability to fetch all data of apps, scans, vulnerabilities, attack modules, and their attack details from the AppSec platform. Get updated status vulnerabilities with, from the AppSec platform. Update the status of the vulnerabilities on AppSec if the AVIT ticket status is changed on ServiceNow. The AVIT ticket will be linked with the latest attack module and their details. The AVIT will get updated with the latest scan in which the vulnerability was identified and the integration can be triggered manually or can be scheduled to execute periodically. Also, we do also have screenshots on this one. First is some uh, Rapid7 IAS modules attack details and a list view, also showing the Rapid7 Insight AppSec AVR integration menu on the left-hand side. Next screenshot is showing the application vulnerability integrations uh, on, on a classic list view. Next screenshot is the vulnerability filtering. Next screenshot is the application vulnerable items, also in a list view. Next screenshot is an application vulnerable item in the form view, also in the classic or platform UI. Next screenshot is the configuration for the integration, showing the region API key, uh, pretty typical for an integration there. And then we're back to our original screenshot. So that's what's new for the team at Rapid7 LLC. Let's see, our next new release is going to be ServiceNow Document Designer with Word. Interesting. Uh, design documents using Word templates and generate documents in Word compatible with Xandu patch 1. So this isn't even available for any of us that are, uh, I don't think patch 1 is out yet, maybe tomorrow, uh, or not tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, key features, add ServiceNow metadata tables and repeatable content blocks to a Word template and format the template according to your preference. Apply the template to ServiceNow record like audit engagement to generate Word documents such as audit report. Enables the automated creation of Word documents by extracting information from ServiceNow tables without manual intervention. Generate it as a Word document attachment or upload as a cloud document to SharePoint. We have screenshots on this one. First one's going to be a Word document showing an audit report template. Next screenshot is still a Word document showing a finance department review Q3. And then uh, we're back to the first screenshot. So just two screenshots, both of them Word. Um, yeah, and that's what's new for the team at ServiceNow. Oh, this is Innovation Lab. It's another Innovation Lab offering, so not supported, no warranties, um, and it doesn't say anything about what kind of instances you can put this into. Next new release is going to be Tanium Patch Management for IT Operations Preview. End-to-end -end patch management with Tanium and ServiceNow. Key features, with Tanium Patch Management for ServiceNow, IT operation teams can proactively scan for and identify all applicable patches for Windows and Linux configuration items in the CMDB, prioritize patches based on SLAs, high-risk CIs, and business impact, automate patch deployments from change management workflows and approvals, and leverage native ServiceNow reporting and dashboard capabilities for patch history, deployments, and outstanding risk. Let's take a look at their screenshots. First is a list view of Tanium patch definitions. Next is another list view of Tanium patch patch status. Then we have a Tanium patch request form on the ServiceNow portal. And then we're back to our patch definitions list that was our first screenshot. And that's what's new from the team at Tanium Inc. Next new release is going to be Tech Assist, real-time OT incident resolution with AWS Bedrock Claude 3.5 Sonnet slash ServiceNow's Now Assist GPT 3.5, guiding technicians with precision for enhanced efficiency and safety. Key features, gather incident details to query the LLM for resolution steps, ensures responses to users' prompts are accurate by considering the history of previous prompts and responses to maintain context and continuity, integration support with ServiceNow's Now Assist GTP 3, GPT 3.5 and AWS Bedrock Rock Anthropic Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. There's no screenshots on this one. There is a video, so if you are interested, go check out the blog and click on the link for Tech Assist from Work for Flow and watch their video for more details. Next new release is going to be the Building People's Automate the Built Environment with WSD, Optimize Performance Across Infrastructure Operations. Key features on the functional side, Employee Center Pro, Workplace Case, Workplace Reservation, Workplace Space, Workplace Mapping slash CAD, Calendar, and Workplace Visitor. On the technical side, now Mobile, Notification, now intelligence, safe employee. I'm just going to make a comment here, an editorial comment. I don't see what makes these functional and what makes these technical. Um, they're all just features as far as I'm concerned, and they're basically all like ServiceNow features. So I don't really know what this is, but this is what's new from the team at the Building People LLC. Next new release in the ServiceNow store is going to be Zilla Security Access Request. Zilla Security makes identity security and governance easier 
easy for organizations of any size. Key features, uh, Zilla Security Access Request is used. Uh, let's see if I can fix my uh, annotation tool there. Zilla Access Security Access Request is used to connect ServiceNow instance with the Zilla Security Platform. This integration enables interactions between Zilla and ServiceNow using OAuth 2.0 authentication, enabling user self-service access request and access requests via the service catalog. Uh, let's see, screenshots. We have one of the portal showing an approval request for uh, requested item number, blah, blah, blah. And then some activity stream or activity history on the portal. Next is the access request form that would show on a portal. And next is an access request overview showing all the access requests and then a list view of them down below. Next screenshot is a quarterly user access review. Looks like a dashboard, but it's basically I have some tabs and then some content in the middle and a list view at the bottom. Next screenshot is the user's application access and permissions. Next screenshot is the security findings overview. Next screenshot is the security findings detail, I guess, maybe. And then next screenshot is the findings for policy. Next screenshot is alert of SOD violation. And next screenshot is, uh, have we gone full circle here? Yeah, we've gone full circle. I didn't realize it. So that's what's new from the team at Zilla Security Incorporated. Um, and that was our last new release. Wow, it jumped up on me. Okay, so we got four highlights left in the episode. Let's check out the first one. App View X has been updated to version 24.08.1. Weird numbering system. Um, in this version, they have cert certificate automation, new features, Swiss Sign CA supports for CLM operations and roll or new revoke, two level approvals on the ServiceNow side, CSR parsing in the ServiceNow UI, and there's that snow again coming up. Uh, service catalog, CLM automation, create, renew, revoke, service portal support for mid-server, mid-server support, and supported versions on-prem version 2020.3.0, FP10, and above. And then it has SAAS or SAS just kind of hanging out there at the bottom. Um, yeah, so that's the highlight notes for App View X. Next up is going to be Audit Up, updated version 1.1.0. In this version, they have bug fixes and enhancements. Bug fixes are notifications not being sent, task identification failing when one of the monitored fields is empty and does not change, extra commas in table fields breaks functionality, minor fixes to audit config form behavior, fixes for the event form, generate script UI actions become visible, even if the script is already generated, and continued monitoring when audit config record was pre previously deleted due to generated monitoring script remaining active. Minor enhancements, modified event form, and updated logic so the duplicated values in the table fields field do not affect the application functionality. All right, next highlight is going to be Health 360, updated version 8.1.8. In this version, they've added some new features, including finding actions. Now each finding is provided with a recommended action. New reports in the workspace, allowing users to filter findings on which ones need to be fixed first. Product suite specific checks, recommendations page, and new run scan page. All right, let's see. And that's what's new from the team at Ivania Sverige AB. I hope I said that right. Um, and our last highlight of the episode is going to be VMware Workspace ONE ITSM Connector, updated to version 6.0.0, and this one is compatible with ServiceNow's new UI, Service Operations Workspace. Um, it's been around for a little bit, everyone, just so you know, Service Operations Workspace. Uh, incidents open, viewed, and worked within the SOW shall have all of the investigation and remediation capabilities of the ITSM connector, including username slash serial number search, device information, remote assist, clear slash change passcode, install apps, profiles, products, execute scripts and workflows, and all other features available in version 5.5, which is listed down below if you want to go check that out. But that's what's new from the team at VMware LLC. And that, everyone, is our entire episode. So let's run through those uh, details real quick, or the categories. We had 12 new releases, 4 highlights, 3 compatibility updates, 8 minor updates, 1 ghost application, 4 fixes, and 4 release notes fails. I hope you found this video or podcast helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in what's new, what got updated, or what disappeared from the ServiceNow store. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.